Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and if you are into soldering, you should know that the probably the most important thing in the soldering, besides of course the flux and the temperatures, is the solder itself. Solder the, the metal that melts in the relatively low temperature and you can connect other metallic elements with the solder. And uh, there are many kinds of the solder and the hobbies and amateurs and uh, probably majority of the people that are soldering professionally are... Well, they le let's say that we prefer... I'm not a professional. I do not do professionally. I, I do solder a lot. That for amateur purposes, the solder with lead is better because it has better properties, it just flows nicer, cover elements nicer. It's easier to achieve a nice joint with the leaded solder than with the leadless solder. And unfortunately, lead is a nasty element that can cause um, deformation, sicknesses, death and harm to the environment and well let's say if you really do not have to you should not really use lead in anything you are using. This is why. Since I know because I checked that so leadless solders from even a few years ago sucked. They really sucked for amateur purposes and they were nightmare to, to use to to remove the, the joint. I'm absolutely fucking disaster. I however decided to check if the good old SN60 PB40 has any alternatives now in the 2020. So instead of only using this one I went shopping and got a this thing. This thing uh, is only a sample, so it's relatively small uh, package. This thing is the also made by Cynel. I love Cynel products. SN99, that means it contains in the 99 per 3% around, um, contains tin and 0.7% of the copper. Copper, you know, CU, the material that you use to make traces on the PCBs and it conducts electricity very well. And it has the flux, traditional SW26 flux, which is made from the resin and uh, we use it all the time. And this also contains halogens. Uh, today I will not be talking about and will not be showing you anything about the solders without the halogens. Today let's concentrate on this one with the halogens. And I've heard some opinions uh, that this, this solder is not that bad and actually you can use it every day. Okay, on top of that I also got uh, one meter of this. Uh, guess what? It's the 4% silver solder. So 96, around 96% is still tin and we do not change anything about that. But instead of using copper or using lead, uh, around 4 or exactly 3.8% of the solder inside is uh, made. No, it's made. It, 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 it's silver. So if you really, 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 really want to, you can make, for example, a bracelet for your girlfriend and say to her, oh, this is this is not clear silver, but it's silver. Do not do it. No, no. They know. They know. They know. So, what are we going to do today? Today we're going to test if still the traditional leaded solder is the best, or maybe the 99, tin and 0.7% copper is a valid competition, or maybe you should start using the the one with the silver, but probably you will never start using, at least in a long, large quantities, the one with the silver because this crap is extremely expensive and if you really don't have to, you probably will not ever have to be using it. So, I have the, the universal PCB uh, with some uh, soldering pads. I have my soldering iron, which Right now I'm gonna clean and the soldering iron is set to 350 degrees Celsius or 660 degrees Fahrenheit. Over the years of my 100% amateur soldering I discovered that this temperature suited my soldering style most. So 
I'm just using this and for the test uh, we're gonna stick with the 350 degrees Celsius or 660 63 I think degrees Fahrenheit. So let's begin with the traditional solder and applying the solder like that. Of course the, the solder it, itself inside has flux so it's flowing nicely. So this is a good stuff one of the best solders I ever used and as you can see not only it flows nicely and this is actually not a big problem to have a nice flow of the liquid metal between the soldering pads oh okay it's also very okay it's also nicely shiny and even okay maybe that's not the best joint but maybe like that so you see it's nicely shiny and this looks like a good solder, soldering joint. So this is the good stuff. This is the good stuff that we love to use and we would like to use it even if the leaded solders will be prohibited forever. So now let's check how the 99% tin and 0.7% copper with the same flux by the way both uh, solders has exactly this have exactly the same compound as a flux called SW26. So let's check how this one is behaving. And uh, to be honest, during the application of the solder, you cannot really feel much of the difference. It also flows very nicely, and uh, there are no problems with putting a nice round joint on the pad so uh, at least we have something like a proof that over the years the technology of the solder went forward and it's not like oh it's not like years ago when achieving a nice flow of the uh, leadless solder was almost impossible and years later there is really a nice progress with the technology and the, the, the what's inside this probably the flux makes a big difference however however if we will look carefully you should notice that the okay okay you should notice that um, the joint made with the uh, leadless 99% tin and 0.7% copper is not that smooth and shiny as a traditional uh, leaded solder. So they look different, this one looks worse, but from the simplicity of application I would have to say that it kind of works. Let me check if applying some of the extra flux on the surface will allow me to have a um, nicer joint structure because good flux always makes wonders and yeah with the application of the external flux i'm using tunnel flux x32 by the way yeah it's simpler it's more shiny however even over however even over here where I use additional flux, this one over here. It's also unfortunately slightly made on, made on the top, so it's not really a perfect. However, if the only, con on, only, only, only condition for choosing the solder is the uh, ease of applying the joint, then it's not really that bad. Um, if we look at the bottom side of the board, then I would have to say that probably even the leadless 99% has a better flow because look, the more of the solder went through the holes in the, in the pads and uh, appeared on the bottom, but it's not really like that much of a difference. If not the mate surface, I would really be extremely positively surprised. So. Not that bad. And finally, let's check this silver thing, which costs like... I paid for this. How much I paid? Two and a half, no, three dollars for one meter. So extremely, extremely expensive stuff, especially if you want to do a lot of soldering. 
and okay this thing also flows very nicely there are no bigger problems with applying the joints it really flows fine it's relatively simple to make everything flow so it's cool let me maybe check, take some kind of the oh sorry take some kind of a wire and let's see how applying this works okay yeah also works pretty nicely there are no very obvious problems however if we go now one more time take a look at the joint itself it's also made still the solder with lead looks the best the the joints are smoothest and the quality of the surface of the leadless joint either with copper or with silver it's not really the best it really lacks some of the qualities of the good old not so environmental friendly leaded solder let's wrap it up was there a progress in the technology of the leadless solder over the last years? Yes, definitely there was a progress and the example of the Stinel Professional SN99.3CU07 SW26 blah 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 is an example that yes, right now the good leadless solder can be used at home just for your do-it-yourself project soldering at home something application is much simpler than years ago it just works the only question um, is how easy this joint will be to uh, unsolder after a year or two of being applied of something because we I, at least I don't know yet how much of the oxides will be in uh will appear on the surface on the on the joint and how much this will make liquefying the joint again after a year or two how hard it will be to do it however the process of applying the the, the solder is quite simple and uh, for everyday use um, forget about this one with the silver um too pricey and if you just want to solder to wires together it definitely makes no sense to do so but does it mean that for example i will be migrating from the traditional sn60 pb40 to this uh, copper thingy no rather not i got it at the experiment and the experiment proven that yeah it kind of works however if you do not really have to be meeting uh, all the european union requirement and rohs norm or however this thing is called, then yeah, probably you are still better with the leaded, leaded solder. However, please do remember about washing your hands and do not, do not eat this stuff, do not inhale too much. It's still, it's, it, it's mostly, a, the inhaling is mostly about the flux, not the healthiest thing around. Just take care of your working environment. And for now, yeah, for now, still probably it's better to stick for your hobby with the traditional leaded solder however this leadless is not that bad but silver yeah let's forget about silver just too expensive okay that's all for today until the next one bye bye